Question is, can we make 500 foot-pounds of torque with a tuned port 350? We've got a ported lower manifold. We've got big tube runners. We've got a big throttle body. We've got good cylinder heads. We've got injectors. We've got the right camshaft. And we've got a header test. Four into one versus tri -Y. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner, and today we're talking about tune port motors. I'm trying to make 500 foot-pounds of torque with a 350, well, secretly, it's actually a 355, small block Chevy using tune port induction because we know it enhances torque production. So after running my 383 test with all the tune port stuff, please take a look at that video if you have not to see how they all do. After running that test, I thought, you know what? I wonder if we could make 500 foot-pounds of torque with a tune port setup on a 350. We ran the wrong cam on the 383. There's so many more cool things that we could do. We could try smaller cams. We could even try try i'm throwing in a header comparison for you guys four under one versus try y because we all know the try y makes more low speed torque so if i'm combining that with the torque producing nature of a tune port induction setup we should have the ultimate and i should be able to make 500 foot pounds of torque but guess what and this is the best part you guys will be able to help me and tell me why i did not succeed as I mentioned in the introduction, I got the wild idea to try to make 500 foot-pounds of torque with a 350, and before you get excited, this is not that. <laughs> this is actually a reason behind me wanting to make 500 foot-pounds of torque with a 5.7 liter or a 350, and that's because when I saw the results of the test that I did running all the different tune port systems, including a carburetor and the and the Stealth Ram, and the SLP, and Arizona Speed Marine, and, and the Mini Ram, and all, all of the different versions back in the day. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put a link up to it right here, so you guys can go right to that video if you're interested in seeing all the different tune port combinations. But when I was running that and testing all the different induction systems on this 383, it got me thinking, hey, look how well this 383 is doing with the tune port setup, and it's nowhere near optimal for, the, for this kind of induction system. To give you an idea, the 383 belonged to somebody else at Westac, but it had airflow research heads on it, but it had a really big camshaft. It had like a 242, 248 camshaft in it, which is, I think, totally wrong, and I think you guys would agree, totally wrong for testing combinations that want to make peak torque at like 30 3,500 to 4,000 RPM. That's probably not a good com combination. In fact, I'm going to show you what happens when we run a carburetor on this. But after running a bunch of different tune port setups, this actually was the factory setup. So we've got that we started off with this combination, our 383 with, with around 10 and a half to 11 to one compression, the big camshaft in it. It was a stroker motor. Obviously we had long tube headers on it and we ran it first with a completely stock tune port setup. So the stock throttle body, stock plenum, stock runners and stock lower manifold, everything unported just the way that it came off of a 305 or a 350. And this is the power curve that we got. So this thing made a little over 400 horsepower. 409 horsepower, but it made 500 foot-pounds of torque, 501 actually. But here's what happened after we installed one of the ported versions. We were up to 533 foot-pounds of torque and 450 horsepower. So you can see the 383 responded very well to having more airflow in this. So we were, you can see the curves are very, very similar. We're making peak power and peak torque right near the same RPM. So the only thing that it did, because we didn't change the runner length, all we did was make the tubes bigger and we made them, them flow more because we also ported the lower manifold, port matched the plenum, and then we had the big tubes, and then we had a bigger throttle body on. So all of that stuff contributed to improving not only the peak power, but also the peak torque output. To give you an idea what kind of power this 383 was capable of, normally we run this thing with a single plane manifold, but even with a dual plane performer RPM, this thing was a 500 plus horsepower motor. So it was a 506 horsepower or so. And then, uh, but but peak torque was down compared to the tune port stuff. It was less than 500 foot pounds. So it was 498 foot pounds. So you could see the the dual plane intake manifold just kind of shifted the power curve. But what I liked and what I was most excited about is how much torque the tune port stuff made down low. So it got me thinking, hey, what happens if I tried to do this with a smaller 350 because I think that the tune port setup is probably a better match for the smaller motor. After all, if you believe the internet lore, this thing was designed for the five liter or 305 motor and not the 350. So every time we step this thing up onto a more aggressive and larger displacement motor, 
it's probably the wrong combination. Plus the fact that this thing had too big of a camshaft in it, I believe, to be optimized for a tune fork combination. So putting all of that stuff together, I thought, hey, look, let's take a 350, let's put a real kind of tune port camshaft in it, let's try to get some compression in it with a flat top piston, let's run good heads like the Airflow Research heads that were on this 383, and then we'll run these ported tune port versions with the long runners, and voila, that's all we have to do. If we take a look at the, the specific torque output on our 383, we were making 533 foot-pounds of torque. So if we take that and divide it by 383, we get 1.39 foot-pounds per cubic inch. If we multiply that by 350, and actually I'm going to do it by 355 because our test motor actually is a 355 and that's one way to improve torque production is make the motor bigger as we see on the 383. That puts us very, very close to our magic 500 foot pound number. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, a little more tuning, a little more airflow. Maybe it's all going to work out. Maybe the camshaft's going to help that. All of this stuff is going to be good. So let's find out what happened when I applied all of this super richy science to a 350. Okay, we've taken a look at the reasoning behind me wanting to try to make 500 foot-pounds with <laughs> foot-pounds of torque. That'd be awesome with a tune port 350. And actually, this thing started out with a as a 355 because the test motor was the original Gladiator from West Tech Performance, which had been rebuilt at some time. So it had a set of 30 over flat top pistons with valve reliefs, so they could run lots and lots of different camshafts of different sizes in that thing. So having the valve reliefs allowed the piston to valve clearance that they needed to run all of this testing. But but we started off with that. But what I did for the 350 is we installed, just like we did with the 383, we installed good heads. I put in actually a smaller cam. In fact, I tried two different camshafts. And we're also going to show you what happens because we tried different exhausts too. I thought, well, everyone's raving about tri-y headers and that they make a lot more torque. So we tried inch and three quarter and, and tri-y headers, uh, inch and three quarter, four into ones. And then we also tried tri-y headers, actually inch and five eighths, thinking, hey, look, the little ones are going to make more torque. You'll see that's not exactly what happened. But here is our combination. This is the Gladiator 355. It's about 10 and a quarter to one with our 64 cc i think they were measured 63 64 cc chamber airflow research l98 heads so they're like 195 cc's i think intake ports very good heads especially for a 350 um the airflow research stuff obviously never fails to produce power when we're doing these things we set this thing up with the tune port setup, one of the tune port setups that we ran on that 383 test, that's an extrude honed lower, you know, fully ported lower, basically. We had the TPIS big tube runners, a port matched upper plenum, and then the front was open up to a 58 millimeter throttle body. So we started off with, with a smaller camshaft. In this case, you know, something more in line with kind of what you would run on a tune port. And this one was a 495 502 lift at 218, 224 degree duration and 110 degree lobe separation angle. This was a Comp XR270 camshaft, a hydraulic roller because this was a, originally a hydraulic roller motor. Um, and then run in this manner, we didn't make 500 foot pounds. <laughs> we, we made them more than 450, which was good, but we made 465 foot pounds of torque and peak power checked in at 372 horsepower all the way out here at 4,700 RPM, 47, 4,800 RPM, owing to the tune port nature of the long runner. But we thought, you know what we should do is Let's find out if, you know, we ran a bigger cam in the in the 383. So let's find out if maybe more cam timing will more cam timing help us make more torque and not the not the small camshaft. So here's what we did. We put a bigger camshaft in it. And this camshaft was a, another comp cam. It was a 282 cam. It was a 230, 236 at 50. A 510, 520 lift cam, so a little bit more lift than the small cam, and, and the same 110 degree lobe separation angle. And the interesting thing is that it, it did make a little bit more peak torque than the smaller cam. So if you want to make more torque, get a big cam, 469 foot pounds of torque. But still, not we weren't near the 500 number that we wanted. But the interesting thing is, in typical kind of camshaft fashion, you could see that it lost power down low and gained power up top. But this was with the um, in, this was with long tube headers, 
four into ones and we thought well maybe we lost too much low speed power and that we could put the tri y headers back on here so we ran another header test and we put tri y headers on this combination and you can see the interesting thing is that we actually lost low speed torque. We lost torque down below 3000 RPM with the tri -wise. So everyone's telling you, oh, you get all kinds of low speed power with tri -wise. Not on all of them, not on these two sets. The tri -wise did gain torque from 3000 up to about 3700 RPM. And the peak numbers were, peak torque numbers were about the same. Uh, we saw a little bit of a dip here and then a little bit of a gain here. Again, they're, they're just wiggling the power a little bit. The tri-wise were inch and five-eighths. The long tube four and a ones were inch and three quarters. So you can deduce from that what you will. But unfortunately, I was not able to make 500 foot-pounds of torque. But here's where you guys come in. Please let me know. What do you guys think we should have tried way back in the day to improve the power? Should we have tried maybe different roller rockers, maybe a 1.6 instead of a 1.5 to add lift? Should we have tried just a higher lift cam for all my lobe separation angle guys out there? Should we have tried a much tighter LSA? Because we, you know, in this case, all we were looking for was a torque number. So we weren't really looking. We didn't have to be concerned with piston to valve clearance, which you do if you tighten the LSA. And we also weren't that concerned with idle quality in this case. And these cams were actually all small enough that even if we had a 105 or a 106 or something that should improve power down low, we, we wouldn't have too bad of an idle, I don't think, on a 218 camshaft. So let me know what you guys think. What kinds of things should, should I have tried back then to get this thing up to 500 foot-pounds of torque. Maybe a little more compression, maybe mill those heads, maybe mill the airflow research heads. Let me know what you guys think. But, so this was this was kind of a big fail. I'm Richard Golden, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, but let me know how I could have made it even better.